Hi there, I'm sorry I can't be in person to deliver this paper. Uh, my connecting flight to Graz was cancelled because of thunderstorms. Um, so I'll be arriving uh, in the afternoon on uh, Wednesday. So uh, if you'd like to talk to me about this paper, please find me or contact me through the conference app. Unfortunately, I won't um, be able to participate in the online discussion because I'll be on my flight uh, at that very time. So I'm here to uh, present a paper about a research project called Urschgale. So I'm sharing my screen right now. Hopefully you're able to see um, these slides. So um, 1901 uh, saw the beginning of the novel tradition in the, the Irish language. It was a laggard by the standards of its European neighbors. The literary culture of the Irish language was predominantly oral, and in the century before the publication of Cormac O'Connell in 1901, very little literature in the Irish language was committed to print or to surviving manuscript. Allied to the dominant oral literary culture, which preceded the 19th century, were other factors which impacted uh, the development of a written literary tradition. These factors were summarized by uh, succinctly but opaquely by the critic Philip O'Leary as the turbulent disjunctions of Irish colonial history. The chief among these factors that hastened the decline of the Irish language were the penal legislation of the 17th and 18th century British rule that banned the use of the language and the Great Famine of the 1840s, which significantly reduced the speaking population of Irish uh, through emigration and death. Taken together, these reasons brought about a unique situation uh, where many of the founding authors of the late 19th century Gaelic revival movement had never read a book in the Irish language. This project, Urschgel, um, aims to remedy the gap in the availability of digital texts of the early Irish language novel tradition by building an open access, TEI encoded a collection of novels for inclusion in the European Literary Text Collection, or LTEC. For those of you who are unfamiliar with LTEC, and I hope there are very few in that category, let me give you a little background on uh, that resource. The European Literary Text Collection arose from the European Commission funded cost action, distant reading for European literary history that ran from 2017 to 22, and of which I was a member. A few important points are worth noting about LTEC. It's a multilingual corpus, including novels representing the diversity of European languages. It's a balanced corpus that aims, where possible, for evenness in the categories of author gender, novel length, publication period, and canonicity. It contains a core corpus of 100 novels in each of 12 European languages, a plus corpus of smaller collections of texts in languages where these balanced criteria cannot be met, and an extended corpus for additional novels from language traditions which surpass the 100 novels of the core corpus. So LTEC is not a large corpus by the standards of billion token language corpora, but its strength lies in its balance, its linguistic and geographic spread, and its TEI markup, which is compl completed at three separate levels of granularity for each language collection. During uh, my time at the distant reading cost action, I was continuously aware that no Irish language novel collection was in development. As the project neared, neared its end and the situation remained the same, I decided to begin exploring the task myself. Uh, I have experience with TEI and text encoding, but my research background is in English literature. My knowledge of the Irish language and literature is, is limited. So after some preliminary research and some valuable conversations uh, with colleagues in the Irish department in Galway, I applied for seed funding from the College of Arts to appoint a part-time research assistant for six months. And Dr. Podrick O'Mahuna, scholar with backgrounds in the Irish language, folklore, and diaspora studies, joined the project in January of this year and completed his, his contract last month. 
So to build a collection of the Irish language novel in the period leading to 1920, we first need to enumerate the novels published during these years and establish a workflow flow for digitizing and encoding their texts. After consulting relevant bibliographies and library catalogues and the work of major critics in the field, we identified 16 novels published between 1901 and 1920. So again, this is a low number. This is in keeping with the fledgling development of the form and of formal print publication in the language. Of these 16 novels, um, digitized versions of 10 appear in, in the Corpus Starul Medalia of the Historical Irish Corpus, a collection developed by the Royal Irish Academy containing more than 3,000 texts published in the Irish language between 1600 and 1926. We downloaded the TDI text from that corpus with the permission of the Royal Irish Academy and modified the encoding to fit the LTEC schema uh, with a combination of automated transformation and manual encoding. Printed copies of the remaining novels in our list are held at the University of Galway, which has strong holdings in Irish language literature uh, across the centuries. The library's digitization unit scanned these novels and we manually transcribed them before completing LTEC conformant encoding. Why not OCR them? Uh, I sense you're all wondering. Well, the reason for this is that early Irish printing had a unique, used a unique font called Clo Gaelic, uh, or Gaelic type, until the middle of the 20th century. Now, this font uh, is derived from the manuscript hand of classical Irish, uh, and, um, and no software currently exists for OCR. Uh, and in the course of our work, we learned of a project that is currently developing such a resource uh, in a collaboration between NYU and the University of Galway. But we decided, in the interest of relative speed, to press ahead with our manual transcription. The lack of suitable OCR software was an obstacle that slowed the process somewhat, but had the associated benefit of enabling us to get to know the novels in more detail while transcribing. This process helped Podrick and me to formulate research questions about neglected texts and to notice interest in linguistic and dialectal variations uh, within and between these foundational novels. No technical challenges or obstacles were insurmountable, uh, but the process is taking more time than we had expected. This is, is still a work in progress. Similar projects should plan for a process that is, is slow and, and painstaking, but to prepare a corpus that is accurately transcribed and encoded, it's important to get the details right. So this corpus does not meet the balance criteria of LTEC, so it is included in the PLUS collection. But some of the reasons for its imbalance point to potential areas of research interest. One of the initial activities of distant reading cost action was to survey different definitions of the novel from across Europe in this period, from 1840 to 1920, examining how different national traditions viewed the generic, stylistic, formal, and practical parameters of the form. The Irish corpus provides evidence for further comparative analysis of these questions in the European novel tradition. Many novels maintain recognizable continuities from the dominant oral mode of Irish uh, literary cultures, such as on uh, which is, is subtitled Finchgale Nua Dienka, or, um, or a, a Legend Newly Done, uh, is, is the literal translation of, of the subtitle. While the minority aim to grapple with modernity and imagine a distinct new model for the Irish language novel, notably the name of this project. Urschgel is the Irish word for novel. It translate, translates literally as fresh story. Some novels in the collection rely heavily on the form and conventions of drama, such as a shedna, with portions organized into speakers and speeches. Lengths of the novel vary considerably within, within the corpus with some very short novels um, dubbed uh, or, or little fresh stories, uh, sitting alongside more recognizably novel length texts. Seriality is also a factor, with one novel 
questioning the formal integrity of um, novel Costa Medina Argela, its original serial parts were only brought together in, in recognizable novel form in a modern edition of 2002. So uh, this project continues to be a work in progress, as I mentioned. We're more than halfway through, including the collection at the first level of granularity, and it can be accessed through LTEC and through the project's own website. The next steps involve completing this first level of a complete corpus and moving on to encoding additional levels. Moreover, we are seeking to publicize resource among literary and linguistic scholars of Irish and compar comparative historians and critics of the European novel. So Ireland is, in the Irish language, is an outlier in that tradition, um, but the reasons for its non-conformity, along with the formal and linguistic features of its novels, offer scope for using, using computational methods to develop our understanding of the range and variety of the European novel. So I'll finish there uh, with thanks for your attention and renewed apologies for, for not being there during the session. Uh, but uh, please do look me up during the rest of the conference if you would like to, to discuss the project and uh, you can use the QR codes on the screen to access uh, the corpus. Thank you very much. Or a lot of live the lair.